Good morning, everybody. Happy May 15th. I cannot believe we are halfway through this month already, and it has been an interesting month to say the least. My name is Joseph Cusick with the Cusick Group Securities offered by Moneyblock. This is MarketStream.Live. I want to take a look at everything that's happening right now in the markets. And folks, we already talked this morning about Asia, Europe, and now we're talking about the U.S. markets. And the markets are grinding right now uh, globally. As a matter of fact, you take a look at the U.S. markets, you have the Dow Jones down 22. It's basically just been grinding, as you can see here. Now, what I want to point out here is, is that I pointed out, for those of you that have watched Market Stream now for the last few months, and those of you that are new, I take a look at these charts just to give you a visual of what's going on with the markets. And you see some lines on here. These lines are very simply 20, 50, and 200-day moving averages. Why do I use these? Context. Control. It gives me context of where the market is and who's in control. If you see that these markets, these lines right here, these bars, as they call them in the tech world, if they're trading above this green line, the 20-day, above the, the red line, the 50-day, or above the black line, the 200-day, that means that those traders that have been buying over the last 20, 50, and 200 days, they're in control. At this juncture, you're seeing that the Dow Jones they're getting very close to a region that I call the battle zone, right here between the 20 and 50 day moving averages. This is where my interest gets peaked on a current trend. If it, a stock or an index or an ETF or a commodity gets within that area, this between the 20 and 50 day moving average, that means that there is a battle. Now the bulls have been in control, specifically in the Dow, for all of 2017, most of 2016. What we are seeing now is a battle beginning. They are challenging that 20-day moving average. With the Dow Jones down 22, not a big deal. A little bit of a muted, grindy trade. Obviously, because we're waiting for to see what's going to happen globally with geopolitical stuff going on. Now we have Germany as far as elections. You had North Korea lobbying missiles again, which got very close to Russia. That's an interesting breakdown. And you're starting to see a big focus by the markets on economic data. We had the Empire State manufacturing number come out that just measures manufacturing in New York State and came down, came a little bit lower than expected. Now, does that number really impact the markets considerably? No. But something like housing starts and permits tomorrow, that does. So that just got my interest in saying, I need to start paying attention to this data. Why do you care as an investor or trader who now is watching this because you know who I am or you're just looking for information. Well, it's because anywhere between 50 to 80, 90 percent of your portfolio is going to be made up of these indices and these stocks that we talk about here every day on Market Stream. That's a big deal, folks, because other than your house, your investment portfolio is what's going to get you beyond 65 years of age. In other words, your retirement. And if you're not paying attention, you shouldn't expect that you're going to really have great returns or at least understand what's going on. And you're going to have a shock factor. So watch us. Um, take a look at the S&P 500, another large cap index. Grindy. You can see it's grindy, but the bulls have been in control, right? Remember, over that 20 and 50 day moving average, stock's been trading above it, in this case, indice. And they're challenging that 20 day. There could be a battle that's being set up here, folks. When it gets into this range, this is where volatility for you traders and you investors that hear the word volatility, that means that you have a heightened expectation of potential violent moves, either up or down. And we're seeing that um, potentially setting up. The NASDAQ, the tech-heavy NASDAQ, you could clearly see that the bulls have been in control here. And as a matter of fact, there is no test of the 20 or 50-day or the 200-day moving average. Watch large cap tech. Um, they have been the drivers. There's been a very few names the Apples, the Googles, the Facebooks. These three alone have been the biggest drivers for the market overall. That's a big onus to carry on your back. Any misstep in any of those three stocks, that's going to put pressure on the NASDAQ. We'll keep an eye on that, but the NASDAQ is up 1260 right now at 568680. That's in the NASDAQ 100. Um, the composite's uh, challenging that 6,000 mark. Uh, but this is where I have called the canary in the coal mine. You have heard that, those of you that have watched. And this is an underlying 
index, the Russell 2000. That tracks these small domestically centric stocks, stocks that are here in the United States, these small companies, the ones that are really waiting for tax reform, waiting for a health care bill, waiting for an infrastructure play. These are the stocks in the first quarter that have underperformed pretty much so all of their large cap peers uh, or brethren. They're not peers because those are large. This is small. This is the battleground that I discuss. Right now, you have the Russell 2000 challenging its 50-day moving average and broke through the 20-day moving average. Short-term bulls, they're on their heels. Intermediate-term bulls are putting up a fight right now. A break of this 50-day moving average, in other words, 1381.36, that's that red line. And currently, the Russell's trading at 1382. A break and a close below that means that the bears are garnering some control in the small caps. That could be a red flag for not only small cap stocks that are domestically centric and focused on the economic data that I was discussing, the Empire State number, you're going to see housing starts and so on and so forth, employment data, that's all going to impact this Russell 2000. And right now the bears are starting to bite in. As a matter of fact, we're starting to see volatility, a little bit of a boost, up 30 cents at 1070, a still historically extremely low. So folks, there isn't a heightened sense of big violent moves in the market. It's a grindy kind of market. And this volatility at 10, that's telling you, expect the grind to continue until we see a dynamic that actually shifts that sentiment. The dollar, DXY is an ETF that tracks the US dollar. The dollar is actually down today. There's been dollar strength for the last few weeks. There's been pulling back and you saw that it did not win that battle, right? Here between the 20 and 50 day moving average. The bears took control. The bulls tried to get back control. They lost this battle so far. It settled on Friday below this 20 and 50 day moving average. And you see that it's trading below at 98.83. And it's now below the 200 day moving average. So the long term, the people that have been buying this dollar index ETF, the DXY, they're under pressure right now. The bulls have taken control. Where we've seen that there's a benefit because of this weak dollar is the crude markets. And there's two catalysts here. The crude markets have been coming off of their lows and the crude markets have been in a very defined range, 53 on the upside and 45 on the downside. We actually saw a challenge 44, um, but it never sustained that. So it's a very tight range and it's been like that for months. Now, what you're seeing here is twofold. One is the weak dollar, that's helping crude. That helps commodity markets. The weak U.S. dollar helps commodity markets. The other thing that's going to help um, crude contract is the fact that OPEC over the weekend came out. OPEC and specifically Saudi Arabia and Russia, which is a non-OPEC nation but one of the biggest producers, said that they will adhere to their production cuts and they're going to adhere to those through 2018. So that's a lot longer than what was expected. Those agreements were supposed to end in June. There was expectation maybe expect them to extend them six months. Now they're going through 2018. Now I'll take this all with a grain of salt. And as a matter of fact, you're seeing the Brent contract, which would be most affected by this agreement. It's not moving. Now the U.S. crude markets are moving, but the Brent contract, which is basically what's pumped out of the Middle East, it's not moving. That's a potential little red flag. Also, that's something you can keep an eye on. Watch the Brent contract because... I don't really believe that they're going to adhere to their their pumping uh, cuts, but we'll have to see, especially if oil stays and sustains over $50 and goes even higher. I think there's going to be a lot of nations that need to pump, and they're going to probably break that agreement. But we'll have to wait and see. That's why you're watching us. Uh, The Treasury markets are a little bit mixed. The short end of the curve, the two-year, down 12 ticks. You have the 10-year and the 30-year, both up basically very slightly. it's nominal at best. You see in like 0.03% on the 30 year. Uh, what's notable though is watch that 10 year yield. Uh, this is where if the markets are going to catalyze, you're going to see that 10 year yield start to get over that 2.4% mark. Uh, 2.3% is where uh, on the 10 year specifically, the, the yield bulls are going to have to hold. If it breaks 2.3% on the 10 year, that means that bond prices are going up. That's going to hurt areas like finance, uh, consumer credit, things of that nature. If we start to see, um, if, if we start to see that the interest rates are not moving to the upside, 
these types of names could come under pressure. There has been some pressure in the bond, in, in, in the finance area because of the fact that we just cannot get the interest rates to move up. And there is a high, high anticipation that they're going to raise rates again in June. And we're going to have to watch this economic data to confirm that. But you're seeing right now that uh, XLF, which is up a nickel right now, is below its 20 and 50 day moving average. Remember how I said this battleground? Finance is in a battle. Let's watch that one closely. All right, folks, that is it for On the Open. Oh, one more, one more. And in full disclosure, um, Tesla. Uh, this is a big name. I wanted to bring it up because uh, there was uh, a downgrade in Tesla by Morgan Stanley. In full disclosure, uh, my clients do have a position in Tesla. Tesla is down $10.71 at 3.3% after what was an impressive pop to the upside late last week, but it was grinding. Now it is challenging its 20-day moving average, and that's why I wanted to bring it up. Watch to see if it gets in between this 310 and 290 range. 290 to 310 is that battleground on Tesla. For those of you that have been bullish on Tesla, watch that range. Uh, that's where the bulls are going to be put on notice. Uh, but the pullback right now is being um, could, uh, attributed to a downgrade by Morgan Stanley. Um, there's also um, Cisco on the move. This large behemoth of a tech name is on the move to the upside, up 80 cents, $34 stock, up 2.4%. What's notable? Battleground, folks. Look at this. See this? The bears were taking control. Broke through its 20-day, held its 50-day. Again, yes, it's a psychological thing. Maybe it's just, but this is just price action. It's taking who believes or does not believe in the stock and giving it credence. And these are levels that you watch. You see it bounce today, but that's that bounce that I saw, you know, that challenge of the 50-day. It comes in. What was the catalyst this morning? An upgrade for Cisco. Um, so we'll watch that very closely. But this is why I refer. This controls my motion. If I was in Cisco as a long or I started to get bearish, I'll watch these levels. This gives me an ability to now look at it more strategically than emotionally. And that's why I use this stuff. All right, and Cisco, uh, up now 77 cents. Let's see if it continues and can hold and close above this 50, 20 and 50 day moving average, but specifically the 20 day moving average, watch 33.75. All right, folks, that's it for On the Open here and what's hot. Join me at 1.30 Eastern time. I'm gonna talk about some really cool strategies. One where if the market does start to pull back, we can strategize how we can use um, a strategy that I call the uh, short put strategy that will allow you to get into stock names at a lower uh, basis price, or in other words, a lower price than with the prevailing market. And that's a great opportunity for you, especially as you're building a new portfolio. So join us at 1.30 Eastern Time, 12.30 Central Time here at MarketStream.Live. Have a great day.